Hello and thanks for tuning in to this week's message. The cicadas, as you probably noticed, have gotten much quieter. June is Men's Health Month, and this week I proclaim the week of June 14th through 20th is Men's Health Week, which includes Father's Day. So happy Father's Day to all the fathers, grandfathers, uncles, mentors, and those who are a father figure to their family and friends. Sadly, too many men don't focus on health as much as they should. Men often wait more than two years between doctor visits, and more than 40% of men don't go to a doctor at all unless they have a serious issue. Although I go to a doctor regularly, over the last year and a half, I focused a lot more on my health and that meant focusing on my diet, and it made a big difference. I lost a significant amount of weight, improved my health significantly, and best of all, I feel really good. So I'm urging men to give yourself a gift and put yourself and your health first. Reevaluate your diet, start exercising or even walking, and start to go to your doctor regularly. Your family and friends want you around as long as possible. I'm pleased to report that our positivity rate continues to be very low, which makes us a county that is at a very low risk of transmission. 64% of our residents have received both doses of Pfizer and Moderna or a single dose of J&J, &J, according to the CDC. And we continue to lead the nation for our 12 and older population for jurisdictions over 300,000 at 75% of the population vaccinated. And our over 65 population, we have 90% of our population fully vaccinated. There are enough unvaccinated people out there that the risk of transmission between unvaccinated people still remains. We really are at a point that there's no reason for anybody to continue to contract serious cases of COVID if everyone gets vaccinated. So do yourself a favor and get a shot. This week, Governor Hogan announced that the state of emergency in Maryland will end on July 1st. The governor's announcement was not surprising given the state's current case and vaccination rates, but it is certainly not a signal that COVID is over, nor mission is accomplished. We are not there yet. There are thousands of Marylanders who have been economically impacted by the pandemic. We may be approaching a new health normal, but we still have much work to do to address the economic issues that COVID has left with us. The governor also announced that the eviction moratorium will last only until August 15th. Thus far, our department has processed over 2 million in requests from residents, and we continue to work with landlords and tenants to ensure that people are getting the assistance they need. This has been a priority since the beginning of the pandemic, and I believe that people will need our help going forward. But the improvement on the health front does not equate to a similar improvement for businesses and their employees. Some businesses will never reopen. Some are reopening and scaling up operations slowly. And there are signs of new businesses rising up, but unemployment is still not back to pre-pandemic levels. That means that for many, there are not yet jobs to go back to. And that has direct implications for the need for rental relief, where the trajectory is painfully clear. No job, no paycheck, no ability to pay rent, and ultimately leading to eviction. The supports put in place because of the pandemic need to remain in place until the effects of the pandemic on the economy have been more fully diminished. I would welcome the modification of the governor's orders on rent protection and unemployment that tied decisions to reduce support to return of unemployment levels to close to pre-pandemic levels. On June 19th, we will recognize the 156th anniversary of Juneteenth. On that day in 1865, 2,000 federal troops arrived in Galveston, Texas to take possession of the state and enforce the emancipation of enslaved persons. We will celebrate Juneteenth on Saturday, June 19th at the Block Rock Center in Germantown. This year's theme, Freedom at the Rock, Acknowledge, Educate and Celebrate, traces the African-American struggle for freedom through education, art, dance, music, and by honoring our elders. The festivities will also include educational activities, an historical journey of African-American music and artistic entertainment, and food trucks all designed for the whole family. Activities will take place both inside and on the lawn of the Arts Center. During that event, we will recognize African-American living legends in our community. These are people who have helped shape the cultural heritage in our county. I'm looking forward to this event and I hope to see many of you there. The celebration of Juneteenth is a good time to give you an update on our progress to address racial equity in the county. When I was on the council, I co-sponsored with Nancy Navarro and helped lead the charge to create 
an equity officer. So when I became county executive, I appointed the county's first equity officer and I added that position to my senior management team because this issue is very important to me. Over the last year, we've created an office of equity, hired staff, and worked to ensure that our budgeting process takes equity into consideration. I want to make sure that our departments are looking at the racial impacts of how we channel our resources so that all residents are served and that we look at everything through an equity lens. I want to take a moment and share why I believe this work is so vitally important, not just to Montgomery County, but to society as a whole. A lot of people don't know the history of this country, let alone the county, and that does not serve us well. I moved here over 60 years ago, and we were not the open and inclusive place that we're striving to become today. And in fact, in those days, it wasn't even something that we sought to become. Housing still had covenants that dictated who a house could not be sold to based on the race or religion of the buyer. There were still African-American communities that lacked running water and sewers adjacent to growing suburban communities where this never would have been an issue. We were just integrating our schools and other facilities. People talked about developing Silver Spring as a whites only place. And in my civics class, we had a debate on civil rights where the pro side represented the view that civil rights were basic human rights and the con side described African Americans as a subhuman species that needed to be taken care of. I found it outrageous even then, but not everyone in that room did, and the teachers felt no need, let alone responsibility, to correct the statements made by the opponents of civil rights. This difference isn't a simple intellectual difference where you can agree to disagree and then sit down and have dinner together. This is a fundamental difference that divided the world into people who had rights and those that did not. That was true in parts of Montgomery County and that was pretty much true across this country. We still have not recovered from that kind of thinking and it's important that the move to inclusivity be embraced by all of us. So we're at the beginning and there's still much work to do. But there is not a question that this is an important work to do in a county that has our diversity. We can't just say that, it, that we are a diverse community. We have to live it. That is what our equity efforts are all about. I want to thank you again for tuning in to my weekly message. Happy Father's Day and see you again next week.